Hello, my name is Tony Felici, and I'm the senior pastor here at Holiday Park United Methodist Church in Plum Borough, where Christ is King, the Holy Spirit inspires, people's lives are being transformed on a daily basis, all to the glory of God. And we're so glad that you have joined us for this broadcast today on Cornerstone TV's Faith and Family Channel. Won't you join us to worship our Lord? What will we call that pretty That's the way to start worship. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I will come and dwell in your midst, says the Lord.
Advent is the time to bind up the brokenhearted. Come, Lord, and make all things new. For past wrongs that prevent us from moving forward. Come, Lord, and make all things new. For any bitterness that scratches our soul. For relationships left in decay and neglect. Come, on, Lord, and make all things new. For any action that has wounded us or by which we have wounded others. This morning we light four candles. The first candle is the light of hope for those in times of waiting. The second candle is the light of hope for those who are wearied by the circumstances of life. The third candle is the light of hope for those who are eagerly watching for God's promised glory. The fourth candle is the light of hope for those who carry the wounds of life. Today we acknowledge our pain and the pain we have caused others. And the light shines, we turn to our Savior who came to rescue the lost, to help the hurting and to bind up the broken. Well, good morning, are you guys excited? Are you excited? Why? why? Why would you be excited? Because What's coming? Um, what? Jesus' birthday. Jesus's birthday, that's right. And we celebrate Jesus' birthday by giving each other gifts, right? And receiving gifts, and it's just a wonderful time of year. But Jesus is the best gift that we've ever had, isn't he? The very best gift that we ever had. Well, look at uh, last week. How many here have gone through our preschool? How many here have been in our preschool? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. Well, last week, we had our preschool presentation. Uh, Holly put together a really wonderful thing, and we had, we had it broken up into three different times. And we had well over 1,000 people here last week. But uh, most of you probably didn't get a chance to see how wonderful our preschool is and you know what, I think it was it four years ago or three years ago, we decided that we were going to be a Christ-centered preschool. And that would be the, the be beginning of how we do things. And so we're going to see a little video here of last week's presentation uh, for all of us to enjoy. And I watched it for the first time this morning, and it's wonderful. So I, I want to give your attention to our screens. And you kids could either look here or you could look back there. Well, we got to get you guys to Sunday school so you can learn all about Jesus, but let's pray first, okay? God of grace and God of glory, we give you thanks always in every way for the gift of life we have in you, for the gift of promises and promises kept. We thank you for you, O oh Lord, for you are God and there is no other. We thank you for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We thank you for these children, for they were yours before they were ever ours, we just ask your blessings upon them as they grow in wisdom and knowledge and love of you every day of their life, that they may be and become the people that you created them to be, that the world might change because of them. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Holly, I got snacks over
You know, we are really blessed in this place. Every single day, Monday through Friday in this place, there's, there's these pitter-patter of these little feet, and there's these songs and voices, and it's just such a wonderful time to be around here. Now, they're off on a little Christmas break, so they're not around here anymore, so it'll be, it'll be really quiet here this next week, but uh, we are very, very blessed with our children in this place. Uh, would you please stand with me for our first uh, Christmas carol of this morning? Hymn number 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. in very good voice this morning. Isn't it good to sing Christmas carols at this time? I invite you to be seated, and I invite you to hear these words that come to us from the prophet Isaiah, the seventh chapter, verses 10 through 16. Hear these words. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask I will not put the Lord to the test. But then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the noise, before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings that you dread will be laid waste. And so ends the reading of this is holy word, the word of God for the people of God. 
Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for once again for the time we have to sit together in this room when we can all slow ourselves down from the hectic pace of the holiday season. We come to you in this peaceful time and we block out all distractions and we focus only on you. Thank you that we can come into your presence without fear because we know you are a loving and a merciful God. You loved us so much that you sent a sign to a very dark world many years ago. And that sign was a baby born to us through a miraculous birth to prove to us that you are always, always with us and that you are faithful to your promises. The only question that must be answered is, what will we make of this baby Jesus? Father, we pray that no matter what we face in life, there will always be room for you in our hearts and that you will take over and show us your power at work in our world and that you would show us how we could be instruments of your power. And now, Father, we pray for your help in the lives of those who we name in our hearts right now. So many people face illnesses, and we pray for their healing. Others are grieving, Lord, and we pray for their comfort. And still others are lonely and confused or distant from you and we pray for their peace. Thank you, Father, for always hearing and answering our prayers. And be with us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven.
Wow. Thank you, Bruce. It never ceases to amaze me how much talent we have in this place. Thank you all for your gifts. Thank you all for sharing them with us. Uh, our stewardship nugget for today is no nugget. I just want to thank you all. I want to thank you for your faithfulness throughout the year. I want to let you know that we are ahead of schedule on our budget and everything. You guys have been really, really faithful, and we thank you for it. Uh, God has truly blessed this congregation to be a blessing in the world. Would the ushers come forward to receive our tithes, our gifts, our vote of offerings, or if you didn't have a chance last week to bring your commit, committal letter, uh, you can put that in the offering as well. Gracious God in heaven, we always give you thanks for the many and varied gifts that you have given to each and every one of us, gifts that we aren't even aware of, but you are aware of them and how you've set up our lives and set up our days. So we just give you thanks. We return a portion of those gifts back into your hands here this morning. Uh, and Lord, we just ask your blessings upon these gifts. Bless them who uh, bring them and bless uh, these gifts, Lord, that together we may accomplish what you ask for us to do in your holy name. For you are God, and you are God alone. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. <coughs> are we doing the Gloria Patri? I invite you to be seated.
Would you all please stand with us for the hearing and the reading of this morning's gospel message that comes to us from Matthew's gospel, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. Hear these words. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. 
His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he then gave him the name Jesus. And so ends the reading of this is holy word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. <clears throat> and I invite you to pray with me, please. God of the word, God of promises and God of promises kept, we thank you always in every way for the gift of your holy word, for your word is holy. It's set apart and it's meant to change us. And so, Lord, we ask that you would emblazon these particular words upon every one of our hearts here this morning, that we truly might be and become who you created us to be. May be Jesus be born again in us this day, that we might know him as Emmanuel, God with us, and one who saves us from ourselves. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. For it is in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Well, listen, I have to tell you, I, I missed you all last week, and uh, I was uh, recuperating from uh, foot surgery, and I had planned on preaching last week, but I knew we had uh, tables set up here for the bell choir, and I, I couldn't put weight on this foot, uh, so I was on crutches, and I thought, well, with a robe and crutches and a stool maybe here, uh, I might have a good chance of getting tangled up and falling down, and you know you didn't want to see that. <laughs> so, uh, but I was very thankful to have Tom McGuff, and uh, Tom uh, preached for me both services, and I'm, I'm very thankful to Tom, and he does a wonderful job, and if you haven't been to a Sunday night service, you owe yourself that opportunity to come and hear uh, how Tom preaches. He does a really wonderful job. Uh, at the end of the first service, I got a, a text message from Chuck Wetmore saying, uh, hey, you had a great relief pitcher in there today. And I texted him back right away. I said, Tom is no relief pitcher. He's a starter. And he says, yeah, he is. He's a really good starter. And so, so I thank Tom and I thank Lucy and I thank them for, uh, for being uh, here and, and being able to, uh, to do that for me. And so I'm, I'm able to put full weight on it and I can stand and, and, uh, and I can stand for at least a half an hour or an hour. So we're going to have a nice long sermon here today. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, this week, I, I wasn't able to put full pressure on all week long, and so my wife Dottie has been driving me around to visit various people, and we had the great opportunity this week. Uh, we got a message uh, on Facebook from Michael Stover saying that he and Amanda were in a McGee Hospital, and uh, that she had felt a little tinge, and they, so they were going to go and get just checked out. Uh, they were really uh, actually going to the Sam's, and they were going to go then uh, have dinner. And, you know, Amanda has told me, uh, one time I, I preached the sermon, and I said, my favorite scripture is this. And at the end of the sermon, uh, I was standing in the back reading people, and Amanda came out, and she goes, Pastor Tony, I figured out what my favorite verse in the Bible is. <clears throat> I said, Amanda, what is it? She says, let us eat. <laughs> so every Sunday when she goes out the door, she always tells me, let us eat, you know, because they're going for, for a meal. So they were going to go to Sam's, and then they were going to eat. And, uh, well, their plans got changed. And so they, they went to McGee, and that night, they had a brand newborn baby girl, Caroline, right? Caroline Ruth Stover. Three pounds, 
three ounces. 29 weeks and three days, something like that. So she was, you know, she's premature and she's in the incubator and, and uh, Dottie brought me over there and pushed me through a wheelchair and everything. I was able to see that beautiful baby girl. And she is well formed, she's got beautiful hair, she's got these beautiful fingers and toes. And, but she was laying under the blue light and she had this mask on her face, you know, from the blue light. And she looked like she was on a beach getting ready to have a margarita or something. I'm serious, and she was just chilling out, you know. But active, and, uh, and yesterday they got to hold her for what, about a half an hour? So uh, say, say uh, congratulations to the new grandma over there. <laughs> Babies at this time of year uh, will have to share a lot of... Uh, um, you know, they'll have to share the Christmas story, right? They, they're going to have to share their birthday. Uh, my daughter's birthday was yesterday. She's 37 years old yesterday. And in fact, uh, Beth shares a birthday. I'm going to point Beth out. She shares a birthday. Yesterday was Beth's birthday. So you want to wish her a happy birthday. And, and I, asked, I asked Beth, I said, you know, uh, when I, when I was born, I, I was born in between my, my father and my grandfather. My grandfather's birthday was on the 2nd of February, mine's on the 3rd, and my grandfather's is on, I mean, my, my, my dad's was on the 4th. So every year at my birthday, I celebrated birthdays. You know about celebrating birthdays with, with people, right? You know what that's like. In fact, we have uh, the quads here, right? They have, the, have their birthdays all together. But here it is. Jesus was born, and uh, he was announced. He was first announced to Mary. And, you know, Mary didn't have that in her plan. She was betrothed to Joseph. Back in those days, uh, in betrothal, it was very much like a wedding already because they had already exchanged the vows. They've already committed their lives to each other. They're already tied together. They just haven't consummated it yet. And so now, all of a sudden... Joseph finds out that Mary's pregnant. You know, I remember our first child, uh, Kelly. I remember planning for that first child, Kelly, and I knew whose baby she was. I mean, I just knew, you know. It was, it was in me that I knew it was going to be my baby. But here's Joseph. He's hearing that his wife-to-be is with child, and he wasn't with her. And so he's ready, and he's a, he's a good man, though. And he's a man from the house of David, which means he's in the messianic line. And he doesn't want to embarrass Mary. He's, you know, he's going to do the right thing. And what you had to do to break off an engagement, a betrothal, you had to actually issue letters of divorce. And so he was silently going to issue her a letter of divorce, and he didn't want to embarrass her. He didn't want to hold her up in disdain or any of that. He just wanted to, you know, do the right thing. But that night, an angel came to him and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. For what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. It's a good thing, Joseph. And you... Father Joseph, will be the one that will name him. And you are to name him Jesus or Yeshua or Joshua, which is what the Jesus, the Greek name Jesus is Joshua, which means he will save his people. For God will save his people is what Joshua means. And so when we think back in the Old Testament to the original Joshua that we find in the Old Testament, he was one that delivered the people after Moses' death. He continued the story of Moses and brought the people into the promised land. He was prepared for that because when Moses would meet with God in the tent of meeting, Joshua was there. And the scripture said that when, when uh, Moses would leave to talk to the people, Joshua remained. So he remained in the presence of God. God will save his people. What's in the name? How important is a name? 
You know, I think names are very important. In fact, when I meet with uh, people who are getting married, I'll ask them what their last names mean. I'll ask them what their first names mean. And it always strikes me crazy that people don't know what their names mean. Do you know what your name means? That's your homework this week. Go home and find out what your name means. <clears throat> My name, uh, Anthony, is, uh, is a word that means uh, worthy of praise. And you know that's true. <laughs> It means great, okay? My middle name, Stephen, is the crowned one. And my last name, Felici, means happiness. So I'm the great crown of happiness. And I try to live into that name. And when our daughter, Kelly, was being born, and we had planned for this child, the whole time leading up to uh, Dottie's, you know, delivery, we knew that we were going to have a baby boy. So we had picked out a name, and, and, and names are important to us. So we had these names for boys, and we had it honed down to Thomas, Anthony, Felici. Thomas, because Dottie's maiden name is Thomas, and we also liked the name Thomas. And Thomas meant twin, and we thought, well, it would be nice if we had twins. But we knew that we weren't going to have twins. But we knew that we were going to have a baby boy. And so we had the name Thomas, Anthony, Felici. Well, uh... 37 years ago, four days ago, my wife is in labor, or so she thought. So we go to the hospital, Ohio Valley Hospital, and after a little bit, they send her home. They said, it's false labor. And this happened a couple of times. Finally, the last time they sent us home, my wife said, no, we're going back to that hospital. This is not false labor. So we went, and on the 16th, uh, actually on the 17th of December, we went to the hospital, and it was late into the night, and she was given this Pitose and everything. Baby wasn't going to come on its own, so cesarean birth. After 29 hours of actual labor, and who knows how long actual, you know, the, the real labor was. And so we had this baby. And we're waiting, and Dottie is, you know, she's in anesthesia, she had a cesarean pregnancy, so I'm, I'm there by myself, and, and all of a sudden, they, they bring me my daughter. And they said, Mr. Felice, you have a beautiful baby daughter. I have a daughter? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, we, we checked. She's a... And I'm like, oh, wow. And so then when Dottie came to, they were wheeling her down the hallway, and I said, honey, we have a beautiful baby daughter. And she goes, we have a daughter? <laughs> We had no name for this daughter, and names are important to both of us. So we're like going through our mind, what, what kind of name will this girl be? What will she be? So finally, after about four days, because back then in that day, if you had a cesarean birth, you were in the hospital almost 10 days. And our daughter was the only one there, and I think they wanted to hold on to her. And, uh, but she was, for the first four days, she was baby girl Felici. And fi finally, the, the nurse said to me, she says, you know, Mr. Felice, you're going to have to name this kid. She's not going to go through life, baby girl Felice. And I said, I know, but it's got to be the perfect name. So I went home that night, and I prayed about it, and I thought about it, and, and it came to me. Kelly Lynn. Kelly means brave warrior. And, and you know, and, and, and Lynn is my, my sister Patty's uh, middle name, and it just kind of flowed. Kelly Lynn Felice, I liked it. And I thought about it, and I thought, well, when I go in and see Dottie in the morning, I'm going to tell her we should name our daughter Kelly Lynn. Well, I go in there, and she says, hey, I think we should name our daughter Kelly Lynn. I said, yeah, I think that's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph is told to name Jesus Joshua, right? Jesus, because God will save his people. But then he's kind of confused a little bit because he said, because it, uh, the prophet said that he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So what's in the name? You know, God who saves us or God who is with us? Or how about the wonderful counselor, almighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace? Or this morning we sang in the first service, uh, Mary, did you know? We're going to hear that in a couple of weeks. Mary, did you know? But in that end of that song, it says, did you know that he's the great 
I am. The great I am is the one that was at the burning bush talking to Moses to save his people. What's in the name? Promises kept is in the name. Jesus, the great I am, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Jesus, who is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Jesus, who promises and delivers his people. For God will save his people. Sound like a good plan? It's the plan. And it's a plan that we celebrate here in 2016, so many years after. The Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, Joshua and Emmanuel. For God is with us. And he's with us even today. Let us pray. God of grace and God of goodness. God of love and God of glory. We thank you always in every way for the gift of life we have in you, for the gift of salvation which is ours in believing in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. And Lord, that you are with us every day by the power in the presence of your own Holy Spirit. So we give you thanks, O Lord. We give you thanks that we are not alone. We give you thanks that we have been saved by your love. And we give you thanks that we can go out and emulate you in the power of your name, which saves us all. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. I don't know about you, but that brings me great joy. So we're going to sing together our final hymn for today, Joy to the World. for just this wonderful worship time together. All your voices, all your musical voices, instruments, the choir, everything all together, praising God in one voice. It's just beautiful. I want to thank you for that.
I also want to remind us that uh, we go in his name. We're, we're, we're Christians because we're in his name. And we have the power of his name and we have the power of his spirit who was in us because God truly is with us. And in us, he will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. So let us go in his presence. Let us go with his, with his spirit and let us make a difference in the world all around us. Bring joy and peace to this world who really needs to hear it. Go in his peace, go in his love, and serve him always. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in worship today. And remember, our prayer is that you would be blessed and strengthened by the power of Jesus Christ in your life, and that you would live a life of abundance and fellowship, joy, and liberty. Holiday Park Church is here for you, and we are more than the church. We are a fellowship of believers coming together to declare the glory of the Lord and celebrate Jesus as King. We study the Word, we practice what we learn, and in the process, we grow together, all to the glory of God. May God richly bless you.